With mechanical keyboards becoming so popular recently, a lot of people are thinking about building their own PCB. So in this video, I want to talk about a few things that you need to keep in mind before you start splashing the cash on a load of new parts. The first thing you need to think about is what you're going to get from uh, your PCB. Uh, so for something like my G860 that I ordered from Taobao, that only needed the switches to be soldered on and it was a functioning keyboard. On the other hand, my Alp64 is going to have to have these through-hole diodes soldered in as well as the switches uh, before I can use it. Um, my Liku PCB, which is in my TX1800, needed surface mount components and that was the first time for me. It was kind of hard at places but I did learn a lot after doing it. So just keep in mind uh, the amount of soldering work that you're going to have to do and how comfortable you are with doing that. Another thing you're going to have to keep in mind is stabilizers. So PCB mount cherry stabilizers are by far the most common. Fancy ones from Zeal, which are also PCB mount, screw into the PCB themselves rather than just clicking into holes. So they are supposed to offer a bit more stability. I haven't tested them yet, but I do have some on hand, which I'm going to put into a board at some point in the future. Another thing you need to think about with uh, stabilizers and something which I didn't realize when I first started building is that even if your board has a plate, it doesn't mean that you're going to need plate mount stabilizers. If the plate doesn't support plate mount stabilizers, you have to use PCB mount anyway. One last thing about stabilizers is the space bar size. So 6.25 is by far the most common stabilizer size for space bars. Uh, seven unit space bars are available too, but those are for people who have winkyless boards uh, like my TX1800. That uses a seven unit space bar and the wire for those space bar stabilizers is longer. So if you get the wrong type, you're not gonna be able to uh, use your space bar, which is uh, quite an important key. So that's it for part one of this guide. Part two is going to talk about firmware, so come back for that. Like if you liked, dislike if you didn't like, and comment to tell me if I missed anything important. See you next time. Bye-bye.